coming up tonight on KSL Outdoors. <laughs> nice fish. That's a three, three and a half pound fish. Yeah. It's fall fishing at the Great. Berry, plus a 50-50 chance to win this boat. We're gonna find out who won that 22 foot crest pontoon boat in the Strawberry Bay Tag Fishing Contest. <laughs> I'm Adam Eagle, and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Hey, welcome to KSL Outdoors and welcome to Strawberry Reservoir. We got a motley crew. We got Matt from Sportsman's. We got my buddy Greg and of course Dano from Fish Tech Outfitters. We're up at Strawberry. What are we going to do today? Well, you want to do alternative ways of catching trout. So I'm going to throw some top water, some swim baits, some off the wall stuff. I'm going right. to think out of the box. You fairy flickers. What are you guys going to throw? Tube jigs. Tube jigs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to give away that beautiful crest pontoon boat in the Strawberry Bay Tag Fishing Contest. Let's go hit the water, huh? You know, most of the hunts are over, the crowds are gone, and a fall fishing trip to the Berry is an annual tradition for us. Monday, we found calm waters and a bright blue sky as we launched. So how do you catch the most fish in your boat? You tell those guys to try something new and different so we can show you some maybe some different techniques. But I'm going with the old reliable Pointer 78 Ghost Minnow. One of my favorite lures up here. You got one? Sorry, Dad. Good Couldn't fish. wait. Look at that. First fish of the day. Wow. Haven't even left the boat ramp. It's going to be a beautiful day. Come on, buddy. Let's go get Dan. <laughs> The fishing at the Berry has been hot one day, cold the next. Some anglers are reporting great catch rates while others are struggling. Our goal today was to kind of figure out what was going on and to find some techniques that maybe you haven't tried. Are you looking at this? Watching. Come on. He followed. That yeah, wasn't real impressive. Take that was about 20 inches. Wasn't yeah, it? we'd take him. There's a few in here. Oh. Get him? Yep. I got him. Want a net? Ah, uh, we might need one. Come on, get over here. That's a good fish. That's definitely bigger than the one I caught. Nice fish. That's a three, three and a half pound fish. Yeah. Pretty. Oh, pretty cool. Hey, how's that? He's about 22, 23, I'd say. What'd you catch him on? I caught him on that big swim bait, I'll show you. There he goes. If that's the one, a six inch cast age, catch 22. And they call it a 22 because they guarantee you can catch 22 bass without a breaking. I think I've caught about 12 or 13 trout on this and hasn't broke, so we're doing good. Eat it. Oh, looking at it. Another lure that is usually considered a bass lure but works really well up here is a fluke. Greg was getting a few on the white pearl fluke. He swirled real hard on this one, came behind it, and there was like a wake coming after it. That's cool. Nice, healthy fish. They're chunky right now. Super aggressive, the water's cold, it's a good time. This is a fluke, and it's a white, kind of a white pearl fluke. Pretty easy to fish. All you do, it's if you've ever fished a Zara Spook down at Lake Powell, pretty similar with this, except you run this weightless, and you just jerk the rod straight down, and what it does is it darts that lure back and forth, and then if you look at it when it's falling, it looks like a dead minnow, or a dying minnow. They'll hit it on the drop, they'll hit it when you're jerking it, they'll follow it in, I just missed one here a few minutes ago. I can see little fish hanging out in these pockets right here inside the weed beds. And we think the bigger fish are chasing them. This time of year, the big cutthroat trout will come shallow and feed on the small minnows and crayfish that are shallow close to the shore. But we were also seeing large cutthroat chasing thousands of little rainbows. Oh, jumped into the boat. <laughs> A little bit nicer fish. Yeah. Another planter rainbow. Since October, the DWR has stocked over 300,000 of these seven to nine inch rainbows, and it seems that the big cutthroat are gorging themselves on them. Oh, there we go. That was fun. There's like six of those fish, all chasing it all the way in from the shoreline. Feeling strikes every cast, but I mean, if you got kids, this would be the time to take them up here. Right now, beautiful bluebird day like this. 
Oh, he's got something hanging from his mouth. He's got a dead fish that he ate hanging from his mouth. Nice cut. Nice cut throw. Well, I'll tell you what. I think we know why, uh, I think we know why the fishing's tough. Look at this. That guy spit up a half digested rainbow trout. <laughs> That's awesome. Sorry, buddy, we stole your mill. But uh, the go-to lure for me today, the pointer minnow. Charge him back up before we let him go. Nice. More lures to try and the winner of the Crest Pontoon Boat in the Strawberry Bay Tagged Fishing Derby coming up. But first, tonight's climate quiz question. The Bonneville cutthroat trout is an important fish to Strawberry Reservoir. The fish is an integral part of the fishery management here, and although it's not native to this drainage, it is native to Utah. Our climate quiz question tonight is, prior to the introduction of Bonneville cutthroat trout to Strawberry Reservoir in 1990, what was the species of cutthroat trout that was initially stocked into Strawberry way back in 1923? Once you know the answer, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page. Give us the correct answer, and while you're at it, give us a like. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our Facebook page the following week. The winner set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. Climate, comfortable, rugged, and lightweight. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, will be right back to the berry. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Sportsman's Warehouse, Evanston, Wyoming, Climate, Intermountain Wind and Solar, and Camp Chef. Ooh, there's, there we go. Welcome back to Strawberry. There we go. Nice little fish, a cutthroat. Look at the spots on that thing. These are beautiful fish up here. Beautiful fish. We're gonna put him back in the water and some away. There he goes. Little pearl colored tube jig with a little black flake in it. Good pattern. Chasing it real hard. They're getting really hard strikes up here. It's really good fishing. There's so much feed in here right now. You know, the kokanee have uh, spawned and died, so I'm sure they're eating the flesh. Also, they just planted a whole bunch of little rainbows and they're eating them rainbows. As we know, because you caught one that had one in it. It doesn't hurt to go bigger, because them rainbows are about six to eight inches. You throw a bigger bait, the skin imitates their food. And it's just like fly fishing, match the hatch. Oh, it's a decent fish. Yeah, I got him. <laughs> oh, it's not big, but it's at least a decent rainbow. Oh, no, it's not a rainbow, it's a cutty. So what you want to do is you want to get something that's going to imitate one of those rainbows they planted. This is my choice, the Cast A Catch-22 16th Rainbow. Adam's been throwing this uh, ghost minnow, and he's been doing pretty good on that. Now, if you want to go to a little bit bigger one, you can go to the 100 series. The first one was a 78. Oh, oh come on. See him? He's right there still. Oh, come on. There's two of them. Come on, come back. Uh, let's get it back out there. They were heading that way. Jack will come out with uh, a crankbait, swim bait that uh, has a soft tail on it. That one will work on a given day. Flukes have been working too. You kind of cast those out twitch them a few times and they'll dart back and forth to look like an injured minnow. Pearl white's been a good color up here today. Yeah, nice little cut. Came right out really aggressive right out of the weed bank, chasing the tube jig. Cool. Yeah, nice fish. That white uh, pearl? Yeah. Yeah. What we're using, it's working really good. Just nice, good retrieve. Just give it some good action. If I come up and smack it, we're getting some really aggressive chases right along the weed bank. Just find it in about eight feet of water. You know, we were talking earlier, it may be 60 degrees up here, but boy, that water, my gauge is saying 47 degrees. It's cold, so that's it's, why you and I are wearing these. That's right. Safety. Yeah. Yeah. Safety number one. And there's different styles, right? I mean, these some of them have pull cords. These two are automatic. Why do you like the automatic? Well, if I get, if I fall out of the boat and I hit my head and it knocks me out, I'm not going to be able to reach up and grab that. Yeah. The water comes up, once it hits here, there's a little Alka-Seltzer tablet in there and it dissolves like that quick and it punctured a hole in the CO2 cartridge and filled it up. 
I mean, it's a matter of seconds and it's filled up. You must when you're out here fishing, or maybe you caught a big fish and I grabbed my oar and smacked you on the back of the head. You never know. I doubt that. <laughs> I haven't caught any big fish lately. <laughs> I understand Mickey has a tip on fishing around the brown trout spawn. Let's go check out this week's Fish Tech Fish Report. The fish are cleaning the bottom, making their reds, and I'm Mickey Anderson from Fish Tech with this week's glowing report. When the fish are making their spawning areas, try to avoid these areas. Try not to step in them or around them. But if you want to fish them, here's how you do it. Right at the start of the egg lane, the eggs are going to be really bright colored. There's not a lot of them in the water, so fish are really looking for them. Go with these more fluorescent colors. Now, once the fish have been laying a lot of eggs and the fish see a lot of them, then you need to go to the little more natural colored like this, and they'll key in on those. The third stage is the pale washed out eggs. Now, what happens here is one female will come in, she'll lay her eggs. Another one will come right into the same place and clean it again and wash out those fertilized pale color eggs. And the fish are really feeding on those and she's getting ready to lay her eggs. Now there's three different types of eggs. You can either tie your own or use a little soft rubber that all you have to do is just thread on or you can peg a bead right onto your line. Hey, for eggs or avoiding the eggs, or anything else you want to know, come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. And now for tonight's fishing line. Hey guys, I'm Adam Eco with KSL Outdoors. Uh, from all of us here at KSL, uh, Strawberry Bay, Marina, and of course all the sponsors, we want to welcome you out to the 2016 Strawberry Bay Tagged Fishing Contest. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. Hundreds of anxious anglers packed the KSL studios for the closing ceremony to the third annual Strawberry Bay Marina Tagged Fishing Contest. Big money fish right there. This year the DWR planted 400 rainbow trout and tagged 395 of them with a yellow tag and five grand prize rainbows with a red tag. In all 188 tagged fish were caught this summer including four of the five grand prize tags. Today those four anglers will find out if the red tagged fish they caught is for the crest pontoon boat or if it was going to be drawn by one of the holders of a yellow tagged fish. I think it's fantastic and I'll tell you what we've always gone to strawberry we love it up there but we went a few more extra times this year just hoping to catch a tagged fish and, and be a part of this great event. Pretty excited. We, we were freaking out as soon as we saw it off the edge of the boat, you know, trying to yeah. make sure we got it in the net and, and <laughs> it didn't get away. Yeah. What do you think of this event? I think it's great. I, I love the, the fact that it's getting people excited about being in the outdoors, taking kids and family, and it's nothing you have to register for. One by one. Can we have Douglas Hansen come up? The anglers who caught a red tag fish came up to find out what they had won. How would you win? Uh-oh. The one stop. Did everybody know where the one stop is? A mountain Land One Stop in Heber. Douglas Hansen's red tagged fish netted him a cool 3,000 bucks from the One Stop in Heber. Betty Smith ended up winning a brand new pellet girl, and Carlos Blansky. Oh what is it? Oh boy. Looks like a boat in there. What is that? Oh boy. Four wheeler. Four wheeler. <laughs> Took home the brand new Polaris 450cc four wheeler. 159. 159. Gloria Taylor caught a yellow tag and ended up winning a new eight horsepower Honda Kicker for her boat from the guys over at Pinnacle Marine. And I teach school and so my kids are going to be excited about this. <laughs> that left the Sportsman's Warehouse $2,000 gift certificate and the 22 foot Crest Pontoon Boat. Trevor Bradshaw caught a red tag fish and... 91. Where are you at 91? Oh you better get up here. Ben Lucero was drawn out of the remaining yellow tagged fish. Got 50-50 chance to, to win this boat. Oh man, this is this is cool. You guys want to swap? You want to swap? <laughs> I don't know. You want to swap them? There's a 50-50 chance. You want to swap them? Uh, no, no, don't open it yet. You gotta wait a sec. You want to swap? No. No, he wants to do it. Let's have him go first. Let's see what you got. Oh, taken. I think it's the boat. I, uh, what is it? Oh. Sports oh. Sports oh. There's a boat right there. It 
dream come true. I, I can't even express how much uh, a blessing it is for me and my boys. We're gonna spend every every minute we can out there, you know, uh, yeah. all summer. Um, oh, such a big deal. Uh, it, what an incredible, um, incredible right. gift. Well, congratulations, boys. You guys are gonna go out fishing? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Go catch another tag fish. Hey, remember this strawberry tag fishing contest is something that uh, Strawberry Bay Marina and all the sponsors help put on every year. So get up, support those guys, and uh, go catch some more fish. Hey, let's go down to a different trail now, and tonight's Utah Field Guy. November is the perfect time for wildlife watchers, photographers, and families alike to get close to big mule deer bucks who are deep in the passion of the rut. The rut, or mating season, usually reaches its peak in November. The length of daylight is usually considered to be the primary factor determining the breeding season at any given latitude. Nutrition and weather patterns also influence the duration and peak of the rut. During the rut, most bucks spend their energy feeding and fighting other males and are usually not as concerned with their safety. This makes them vulnerable to those wishing to get some video or just take a picture. They also become vulnerable to poachers, so if you're out, take note of your surroundings and report any suspicious behavior. Some great places to look for big bucks this time of year are Antelope Island and the Henry Mountains, where some of the biggest bucks in the state reside. The Ponce Gaunt and Book Cliffs are also popular spots, but anywhere you find does, you'll find bucks. Don't forget to take your binoculars or a good spotting scope to get a closer view. And for more information on bucks, bulls, or anything regarding wildlife in Utah, be sure to check out our Utah Field Guide on our outdoors page at ksltv.com. Well, I'll tell you what, the uh the old standby pointer minnow was the only thing I could catch him on today. <laughs> it's been a slow fishing day, but boy, the weather has been fantastic. Let's find out how that recreation forecast is shaping up now by turning it over to the guys and gals in the weather department. Nice, Cuddy. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. Are you a fly fisher? Well, you might be interested in the Utah Fly Fishing Hall of Fame Award Banquet set to take place next Thursday at This Is The Place Heritage Park. The event has been initiated to honor those men and women who have made major contributions to fly fishing in Utah. Money raised will help organizations like Casting for Recovery, Real Recovery, Project Healing Waters, Warriors of Field, and the Henry's Fork Foundation. For information or tickets, check out wasatchexpo.com or stop in at Fish Tech Outfitters. Just a nice slot cutthroat here at the Berry. Hopefully it gets bigger and badder. Eat some more chubs and not so many rainbows. Hey, don't forget when you come up with your family, your friends this fall, catch a few fish. Let me get hit back in the net. <laughs> Submit a few snapshots, you might win our big prize from Camp Chef. Now here it is, the best of the week as we release this fish, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with possibly the biggest fish Steve Johnson will ever catch. Steve was up steelhead and salmon fishing on the Snake River when he told his guide he would really like to catch a sturgeon. So Steve put out a rod during lunch and boom, Steve was into a battle with a fish over eight feet long. Steve says there was no strap, no tag team, just him and the fish. And Steve, well, he hasn't stopped smiling since. Debbie and her husband have found a love of the Boulder Mountains and fly fishing for the huge brook trout that are found there. As usual, Debbie outfished her husband catching several spectacular fish. The couple can't wait for next year when they can try a few different lakes. Cameron took his 12-year-old son Jaden and friend Nick out on the youth pheasant hunt near Utah Lake. The family dog went on point. Cameron grabbed his camera and shot this really cool shot of Nick taking his first pheasant. Rusty and his family says they had a very successful hunt. Rusty's kids were able to watch their Uncle Ty bag this nice buck and they even helped him clean it out. Rusty was also able to revisit the site where he asked his wife to marry him. Rusty says even though he didn't fill his tag, he still built some awesome memories. And finally, our winner tonight has just shot a buck bigger than any dad has ever taken. 12-year-old Bracken McQuivy was hunting with his family when they jumped a small four-point in thick oak. They were hot on the buck's trail when suddenly this giant jumped out. A quick coyote howl, the buck stopped and Bracken's rifle went click. The safety was still on. The deer ran off, but dad stopped it again and this time Bracken didn't hesitate. Bracken couldn't believe his eyes when he walked up on this 28 and a half inch buck. You know Bracken, most kids shoot a few spikes or two points before they get a crack at a buck like this. Not fair. 
a great memory for this 12-year-old, and now our great prize, as Bracken just won our Snapshot of the Week. Remember, submit your pictures or video, plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures, online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a commemorative 100th anniversary National Park's cast iron Dutch oven and skillet. And the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. If you're going to smoke, grill, or bake, the Camp Chef Smoke Pro's got you covered. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. You know, I kept thinking it was a tough day today, but actually we caught quite a few fish. Matt caught a lot of fish. <laughs> he did, no, he Matt just, caught a lot of fish today. Catching a lot of little, little rainbows. Little fish, yeah. You caught all the little ones, I caught all the bigger ones. Hey, Dan that? caught the big one. Yeah, Dan caught the big fish of the day. That was One good. fish, that's all I come for. <laughs> that's all we brought you for was a big fish. <laughs> hey, how about uh, the family that won that Crest pontoon boat? That was three happy kids. They were the big winners, man. Yeah. That was an incredible day. Uh, watching those folks you know, win that boat, what a deserving family. Yeah, a lot of fun. Hey, I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors your mind you get with your family, your friends, and make some memories like a late season trip to Strawberry Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.